Hello, I am back again and I've just got time I think today to show you how to put together these battery packs. Um, I just need to do one for this leg and uh, I plan on changing the colour coding as well from obviously red and black to blue and brown and um, obviously here you can see the housing for the other leg which is a mirror image of the one on the left hand side and uh, I've just taken one of these links out just to show you how easy it is to remove this so I'm just turn this at 90 degrees and the whole thing comes off um, here's a couple of bits that I've made um, designed these little PCBs on a computer um, to help make up these battery packs um, this piece here goes in the center between the cells and uh, these end caps here go one on the positive side one on the negative side and I'm going to put these um, kind of poly fuses uh, resettable fuses in the positive side and I'm just going to show you quickly how to do that right there's all the components laid out on the bench there I've got the poly fuses the two cells end caps the centerpiece and obviously this plastic um, acrylic tubing that I'm using which obviously when it's finished goes inside there and because of the inside diameter of this acrylic there will be a gap and I'll show you why that is essential soon right I'm gonna begin the assembly of this pack by doing the end caps so I'm going to do the positive side first which is the side with the poly fuses which you can just about see on the top um, these are both 3.8 amps each in parallel and uh, hopefully that will give me enough current to get it started and test a few of the servos on the uh, robot um, if you look at these hex spacers here you'll see that I've lined them up in such a way that this edge lines up with the side of the polyfuse before I start. Um, so I shall now solder it in that position and uh, take it from there. Hopefully you can see what I'm trying to do here. I've just tinned the um, this side here and I've tinned also the underside of this tag and I'm going to put that piece on uh, in situ first before I fit the polyfuses. Hopefully you can see what I've done there. Um, I've obviously tinned both sides. I've now put the solder as well on the top of this. And um, it's flowing nicely. And uh, once I'm happy with that joint and it's cooled down slightly, I'm just going to snip off to the edge of the circuit board this uh, tag. All right, so there it is. Uh, I'm now going to similarly tin the other section of this, uh, the other part of that pad, and also the underside of this polyfuse, and then fit those. Right, that's what it looks like at this stage. And uh, similarly with the other side, I'm going to tin the both sides and uh, just absolutely smother it in solder. Uh, I'm then going to strip away five millimeters from this insulation on here and uh, the length I've chosen is just an arbitrary one which happens to be the length of the rule and uh, I'm going to use that tool there to do it so I shall show you what it looks like when it's finished right there we go the uh, positive side of the battery is now finished and I shall now move over to the second side which is the negative end of this cell right that's what the uh, negative side of the second cell looks like when completed and I thought I'd better mention at this stage that um, you shouldn't really try this at home unless you are a qualified engineer um, as batteries may explode if you get something wrong or they overheat and it can be very very dangerous um, when I finish this pack if I get time I'm also going to fit a um, some thermistors uh, close to each of these cells so I can actually externally monitor the temperature uh, during the charge and discharge cycles right I'm now going to fit this um, cell separator piece and um, Normally it would probably be okay to solder the uh, two halves together like this, but basically I don't trust that what looks like little piece of cardboard 
inside there. I'm thinking if anything goes wrong or it overheats, I don't know how long that would last before this then ends up shorting to the uh, the side of the case. So I'm going to fit this um, because it's safer. Right, there we have the first stage. Um, I've just done one side for the moment and I'm going to snip off this side just level with that edge. Right, I've now snipped off this uh, tag here and I've just tinned it. Uh, also on this side, plenty of solder on there. And basically I'm going to put the soldering tip in between the two and um, heat one side up, then the other, and then slowly bring the two together like this. And then when it's nice and hot and the solder's flowing, I'm going to quickly push the two together and take the soldering iron out to, uh, to so they both bond. Right, if the assembly's gone uh, correct, it should look something like this and it should fit in this plastic uh, housing quite easily. Right, the next bit gets a little bit more complicated because what I'm trying to do is line this up. Right, if you see this base unit here, you see as I've assembled it, you've got a uh, hex spacer there, one there, and there's also one there normally. And uh, what you've got is thread, thread, and threaded portion there and the objective is to get the battery pack in such a way that when you put the two halves together if you remember I said there was a small gap well that small gap is basically to locate onto the threaded portion there all right and consequently also these terminals these wires should line up with the slot in the side all right, so what I need to do now is put a little bit of masking tape on the uh, the bottom and the top of these. Uh, I'm going to offer it up um, to get the rough location. And then I'm going to drill a hole in there. So this will protrude through the hole. And then when I assemble it, uh, everything will be in the right position. So if I need to do any more detail, I will show you. Right, I've just put a bit of masking tape on each end here and what I've also done is measured the distance between here and here because obviously that is the distance between the holes on uh, either side. I mean the whole thing is designed to be symmetrical so you'll have the same distance from this side as from this side and I've just measured that on this particular one as 100 and 87 I mean it might vary slightly depending on how accurate you were with uh, this obviously if it's slightly wider uh, we shall see right I've temporarily assembled the pack in this way so I can now offer this up to the base I've just bent that up slightly and this is now protruding uh, out of the lower end and if I offer this up over here you will now see that locates now what I need to do now is draw with a pen between the two slots and that will give me the center position uh, for the hull and obviously I said the distance between the two was 187 so I shall just do that now Right, I did something similar with the uh, other side and uh, now you can see the two tram lines here that were created by the slots and um, obviously this overall length here is 200 and 187 being in the centre which means 13 so 6.5 from that side and 6.5 from that side and then I shall drill the holes. Um, if you're out slightly, don't worry about it too much because you can always open up the diameter of the hole uh, until it fits um, nicely. Right, there's the two holes, about 4.5mm uh, each diameter and I drilled a small pilot hole first and uh, now I'm just going to remove the masking tape and fit the pack together. Right, if everything's gone to plan, it should look something like this when assembled all right and the positive end which are all facing down for a reason I shall explain in a minute 
All right, now to test it, there we go. It should fit in there nicely. And also the top section. Still possible with one hand, he says, just about. All right, now all I need to do is finish the other two packs and fit it back on the leg. All right, so I think I shall leave it there for the minute. And there it is, finished battery pack, or as far as I'm going to go this evening because I need to go home and get some sleep. So you can see there it all fits together nicely and I uh, just need to fit it onto the leg. Um, these two dimples here incidentally show that it's the bottom and it lines up with this, these two here. So once it's on the leg it's facing a particular direction. And um, another thing I was going to mention, now I'm out of focus. Um, another thing I was going to mention is this um, positive uh, end is always facing down. And the reason is, is because if these batteries go wrong for some reason and, uh, heaven forbid, they explode in some way, um, it's the top of the battery that tends to fire off. So, let's just show you the, the positive. This cap here is the bit that will fire off if these explode, and I just basically want them to go in the same direction. So it gives me an element of predictability. If anything's likely to go wrong, I can I can kind of envisage what might happen. So that was the reason for that. Um, anyway, keep watching, and hopefully next time I will show something actually moving on the main body. Obviously, you've seen the head, the hands. Um, everything else moving uh, separately, but I haven't yet had everything moving all fitted together. So um, watch this space and uh, it won't be too long before you start seeing other parts move.